Uh, or up here at Proctor Creek. Water looks nice. Who knows? We'll have a decent day after all. Who knows? It's a beautiful day. I don't see anybody. Yep. Doesn't look like anybody walked down from Reader. And we're just going to stand at the top here and fish it. Hell, the last time I was here, the water was way, way up. A lot higher than it is now. Those three big rocks right there were, oh, shit's about completely covered. It was right after they told us we couldn't fish anymore. Now somebody can't let fireworks off, can't clean up their own mess. Oh, and people wonder why we can't do anything, go anywhere. I'm gonna just float a jig through here for a couple hours. Then we'll get some breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Light up a bunch of firecrackers and leave all your mess. And wonder why there's nothing nowhere or no one. Well, who knows? Maybe I get lucky, maybe I don't. Probably not. I don't think there's a lot of fish right now, but. We'll give it a shot, see what happens. I have to shorten my leaders and stuff up today. Water's not near as deep as it was. I said, where I'm standing right now was four feet of water. I say, this is not the best place to come this time of year. Well, a reader's not even a good place to go this time of year in July. Most of the fish have already been caught or screwed with so bad that they're never gonna bite. But you never know, you get lucky once in a while and you hook something decent. I don't care, I just want to hook fish. So we're just gonna get up here and fish that current right here in front of us. See what happens. You never know. Weird shit happens. Once in a while you're just standing here like this and see a steelhead cruise through and go, ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. They might not bite, but you saw something. I'd rather be down there fishing that whole corner right there. That's that's the spot to be right now. Fishing that whole corner. But like I said, I'm, I don't want to walk those rocks all the way down in there. I'm lazy. I'm old. And I don't need a busted hip. I already did that once. Sun will be burning through those clouds real quick. We'll give it a shot and see what happens. It's deep right through there anyways. Let's go get out there and give it a shot. Just don't want to get all wet doing it. I said, I'm getting old. We're just going to get up here and stand right here, I think, and just fish that current line. If there's fish, great. If not, oh well. We'll go up above. Like I said, I don't even want to get my feet wet. You can put all this log bank walking across that. It's a good way to break your neck. just come here and fish this spot. Just right that drift. It's not very deep right along there, but you never know. I'll turn this thing on if I hook something. That's where I plan on going. I don't plan on walking up river to the top of this hole or anything like that. I'm just gonna stay and fish this. I'd like to fish on the outside of that seam, but it means that I'd have to hop my ass out there and I don't plan on it. We'll just fish this seam for a couple hours and see what happens. 
Well, haven't had a bite yet, but when you look at this, I never ever in 40 odd years of doing this have never gotten tired of standing on this river or any river, listening to the sound of it and being completely alone or being here with a buddy or something. I never get tired of this. I am so going to miss it one day when I'm too damn old to even waddle my sorry ass out on a river, but I don't understand why more people don't fish. And look at this, that's really gorgeous. Good fresh clean air, no one around. They'll show up once it gets heated up, probably swimming around in here, that's cool, I'll be gone by then. But I don't, I never ever ever get tired of this. And every time I do it, it's like the first time I ever did it. No, they're just running a float and a jig. And we're running a black and a little bit of orange on it. We're running down to probably, oh, I'd say four and a half feet, maybe. We're just, once in a while we get hung up, so I know I'm right down there on the bottom. kind of kick myself in the ass for not bringing a bunch of small spoons with me. I'm sure I could have pulled something out of here. Probably not a steelhead, but something. Then you know, lots of fish bite on spoons. But like I said, I never get tired of this. Absolutely gorgeous up here. You know, there was a guy here with his dog. <clears throat> Way down below me for a little bit, but he left. And the fish just rolled right there, right in front of me. There was a smoke as I just come up. It's that or a small trout. It wasn't very big. It was only like six, seven inches, and that's just about the size of the fish they let out a reader. Like I said, if I'd have had a spoon, I bet I could have got it to bite. I might be able to get a bite if I put a bead on and run it through there, but I don't want to target little fish. But nice to know, okay, that's where it's hanging out. It was eating bugs. That's why it blew up the way it did. Didn't, didn't jump. It, it ate something off the surface. That's why spoons are so good, because you're usually not down that deep, especially small spoons. Eight-pound test line, small spoons. But I didn't bring any. I just brought worms and jigs and beads. And I, you know, I could probably go to a small bead and roll it through there and probably get it to bite. But like I said, I don't want to target small fish, but it tells me that I've been casting in the right spot the whole time. There's fish there, so there's got to be more. Who knows, maybe I'll get a bigger one. But like I said, I never get tired of this. I had my float go down, but I don't think it was going down because of fish. I think it was going down because I was getting hung up. I know it does because I've knocked some of the paint off my jig already. There's no big deal. Sometimes I just a gray-headed black jig that's really, really good. Because I've seen fish many a time just go after the color of lead. We'll keep at it and see what happens.